Back around 1997, I drove to Boonesboro, Maryland to visit the Boonesboro Museum of History, the labor of love of Doug Bast, a house stuffed to the rafters with Civil War swords, bullets, clothes, massive arrays of exotic historic bric-a-brac. When filmmaker Steven Spielberg was sketching out his movie Amistad and his art people needed some real chains and shackles to study and replicate, they gave Mr. Boss a call. He wisely suggested that instead of him sending his shackles and other oppressive irons to them, they should come to his museum and draw them, and they did. As I moved through the endlessly fascinating displays in the floor-to-ceiling rows of curios, In the middle of the room was a glass case with this in it. I was struck dumb. When Doug came into the room, I just began telling him the following story, not knowing anything about the origins of the hideous collar before me. The story came from a man named Norman MacDonald, who had told me in a tape-recorded interview November 28, 1990, on the farm in Jefferson County called Elmwood, the home of two very lovely and respected people, Oscar and Janet Stein. Basically, Mr. McDonald, who took care of things at Elmwood, wanted to tell me these things, even though they were tough going to hear. He said his grandmother, Mariah Drew McDonald, used to tell us these stories all the time, stories of what happened at the same farm, Elmwood, before the Civil War, when Mariah was a young girl and enslaved there. Census back-checking showed that Mariah Drew may have been the unnamed 14-year-old girl at the farm as listed in the U.S. Census slave schedules in 1860. Her death record, dated June 28, 1938, in the same Jefferson County, showed Mariah McDonald as having been born, the records say, about 1847, the daughter of Washington Drew and Annie Branson Drew. That would make her match close enough age-wise the listing of the 14-year-old at the Lucas Farm in the slave schedules of 1860. After the Civil War and those enslaved felt legal freedom, the 1870 census shows Mariah Drew, not yet married, still working and living at Elmwood, just as Norman MacDonald said. The property owner, Robert A. Lucas, and his wife, Catherine L. Lucas, were both 55 years old. Mariah Drew married and became Mrs. Mariah McDonald. In the interview with me, Mr. McDonald told how he was raised by his grandmother, this Mariah McDonald, to help his mother who already had quite a large family. And Norman Lucas, he was there when I was born. So my mother, she said, what are you going to name him? So Mr. Norman said, we named him after me. He was a white guy. So we named him Norman then. So after me naming Norman, so my mother had so many kids, so many of us, 13 of us in the family. So my grandmother said, Lee, your name is Leanna. So Lee said, I'm going to take one of these kids, you got too many. So she took me and kept me when I was, what if she took me when I was six months old? And after she took me when I was six months old, we moved to Duckfield. And we stayed there for years and years and years. He grew very close to his grandmother. In these years, she would tell him stories of her past when she was once young like him. Sitting in Elmwood's kitchen, he began telling me the stories his grandmother told him. And uh, you, you also told me some other stories about uh, this. You know, when they took this guy and put a uh, metal collar around his neck, and put two spurs my grandma said a body years so he couldn't turn his head, you know, like turn your whole body. So they left it on him in the summertime, they worked swords and he they flies began to do it. So the law made him take it off of him. So I think it's old blacksmith shot down here when he went down there and took it off of him, cut it off with a cold chisel so they hurt. Took it off of him. And then he had a place I heard my grandmother said in the ground that it's built for cave and it had plugs up in it, wooden gloves, sharp, mm-hmm. and the people didn't do right. You put them down there for a night or a day, and you couldn't sit down, you couldn't tie the thing up. They should put your feet inside, way between your gloves. Mm-hmm. So they let them down, maybe a neck day or a night or something like that. That's the way to punish them. What would a person do to be punished like that? Well, just run off, or maybe 
do something, you didn't have no business of it because the president. Nat McGrammy used to tell us them stories all the time. The Collar. I finished telling Doug Bost about the collar and Norman MacDonald's story at Elmwood. We were both standing in the room as he listened intently. There was a moment of silence. Doug seemed shocked. He said, I bought that out of the Lucas estate. 